So I fairly recently did some VO2 max testing to figure out my VO2 max, but also to set some accurate training zones and lay a benchmark down so that I can measure performance improvement throughout the season. And what I thought would make quite an interesting video is if I talk through the performance data that I got, so my own personal values, but also to discuss what you can expect from a test like this and kind of what I experienced doing my sort of first VO2 max test really. I'm sure quite a lot of you watching this video have at least toyed with the idea of getting some sort of testing done, whether you're just inquisitive about your own aerobic capabilities or uh, whether you want to set those accurate training zones like I mentioned before. Let's jump into the, the data and I'll talk through the, the numbers that I produced and also my experience of the test as a whole. So here we are with the uh, report from uh, VIT4 and Craig, who was the sports scientist who uh, conducted the test for me. Um, so this is the full physiological testing report and uh, we just got some of my data here. So my weight on the day of the test was 56.8 kilograms. Um, and we've got some kind of other data around the actual room that we're doing the testing in. Um, and here we get to the first kind of bit of interesting stuff. So we didn't actually do any blood testing this time uh, just because the delivery man hadn't um, delivered the lancers, but hopefully we'll get that done next time I'm in the lab. And yeah, base heart rate, uh, we did that a few times and averaged out 48 BPM. I was a little nervous actually before this test because I hadn't done one before. So uh, that was probably maybe a few beats higher, but it, it did it did sort of stabilize and come down. Um, and all that other sort of baseline stuff. Um, body fat percentage, um, where are we? That was quite good, so five, essentially 5%. That was done with some of seven skin folds as well as um, like a, a um, Tanita bioimpedance um, measuring system so that averaged out at ever so slightly above five percent which was which is fine um that there may be room to reduce that ever so slightly but it's that's pretty optimal so i was, I was fairly fairly happy with that um target body fat percentage seven percent for me um as someone trying to qualify for the olympics um and other world championships and stuff like that um Obviously that's a little bit high and this is probably um, pretty good. Um, again, target weight, not sure all that kind of really applies. Um, and these are some just basic guidelines um, that go along with those metrics. So here's the really interesting stuff. This is my actual performance data from, from the testing. So maximal power that I achieved during the test, bear in mind this isn't a sprint test or wind gate test or anything like that so this is purely kind of there's no sprinting there's no big um, accelerations or anything like that it's a it's a ramp test of failure and those ramps are very controlled so the maximal power that I put out in the test is very close to the power that I uh, the, the level that I failed at so uh, we've got 452 watts, so nearly 8 watts per kilogram, and uh, my aerobic maximal aerobic power was just under 450, so 448. Maximal aerobic power to weight, so 7.9, which I'm I'm really happy with. That's uh, that's definitely good considering this was done, I think in March or early April, um, so it's right at the start of the season, um, and here is my. VO2 max, which is 85.21 mLs per kg, which uh, again I was I was pretty pleased with that. I I knew that my a lot of my strengths were um, around the the sort of five minute mark. So when I have to do a, a five minute all out effort, that's re really where I excel, especially on a climb. My actual um, non relative VO2 max is not earth shattering so on the flat um, being a under 57 kilograms that's quite a struggle for me but um, as soon as the as soon as the road or the trail goes up generally that's uh, that's a good thing and i can start to use that uh, relative uh, vo2 max that 85.2 which, uh, which is higher than chris froome 
<laughs> as it happens but as I said there's a lot of other metrics that come into play especially this one where that's going to be quite that's going to be lower than some bigger guys um, you know that I just simply can't compete with on the, on the flat where it's just purely about raw power um, peak heart rate in the test is 197 I've definitely seen 204 in training um, and 202, 203 in some races like the World Cups um, so I reckon I could have got that higher and what's interesting about this is this was all seated and when I do my sort of efforts um, on the road and in training I'm actually always stood out the saddle and I find I produce a lot more power when I'm when I'm stood out the saddle so that's quite interesting I might that might be something to try next next test um, and I reckon knowing what I know now I reckon I could push a little bit harder and get out the saddle at the end of the test because I did go from about 120 rpm to zero so as Craig the performance um, the head of performance said you know I basically just my, my mind pulled the plug rather than my body completely failing so it'd be interesting to do that again um, this gave us this test also gave us a, a threshold power of 317 watts now again I think my actual um, threshold power is a bit higher than this I have done 354 watts for 20 minutes which would come out at about quick maths I think somewhere between 325 and 330 watts um, uh, if we were doing the um, 20 minute test 95% um, of the 20 minute test wattage so that's 5.6 watts per kilo but again it's indoors it's seated it's on a bike that I'm not I wasn't used to it was quite a sit up um, quite a, quite an upright bike as you probably saw in the video um, at the start so yeah I think uh, they're good values but I think I can get those get those higher and especially with the training some of the training recommendations that I got after this test um, I think we can uh, we can improve that quite a bit more and then VO2 max uh, v or VT2 sorry so ventilator threshold 2 that's all right yeah it's just under 7 watts per kilo um, so yeah that's that's most of the um, most of the main data and then I kind of got some training intensity zones so different different sort of systems um, which is really good because I can then just apply that to the different ride protocols I'm doing and uh, make sure that at least based on the what I was doing in this test they're uh, they're all accurate and then as I said I can lay this has laid a sort of performance benchmark down for me to then measure against uh, throughout the season after I've done some made some of the training changes um, one of those was actually to to do some fasted training so some uh, endurance rides some steady state um, long slow distance stuff um, in a fasted state so I've been I've been doing that uh, a bit more recently, as you might have seen if you follow me on Strava, and um, seems to have been working well. I had a race at the weekend, um, mountain bike race, UCI race, and uh, punched it out of the race, unfortunately. But I was feeling really strong in the race, and um, after a load of technical issues, I was managing to bridge right back up to the lead group. You know, when I was thirty seconds down, so form is definitely good at this point and I kind of know what I'm doing um, training wise um, so I've got a good direction and that's all going well um, so yeah uh, in terms of just some experiences of the test um, I thought it was going to be really really difficult and obviously with it being a ramp test to failure it, it is it is tough um, right at the end you know you do go to complete failure but to be honest, it, it, it ramps up fairly slowly and I didn't actually watch the watts as I was doing it. So I didn't have um, a dashboard in front of me showing what I was actually doing. So um, just doing it by feel and with it being the first one that I'd done, it probably um, it probably helped me to uh, not have any sort of pre-existing expectations. And uh, yeah, it obviously hurts, it hurts at the end and you've got to you got to dig deep it's it's a bit like a hill climb so it, you know you just ramp up and ramp up in intensity until you can't go anymore but that actual period of real suffering is quite short so it's really nothing to get that nervous about and um 
and to be honest all, all uh, with the vo2 max testing a lot of what they're looking for is for that vo2 to level off and then start to come down again so once you've once you've had it sort of peak and and start to level off that's basically what the test is looking for so um so yeah it, it didn't last that long i can't exactly remember what the ramp protocol was but uh, it, it wasn't a particularly long test um i didn't throw up or anything like that at the end of the test and it it was it was hard but um fairly short and nothing n nothing different than doing some really hard racing on like the last lap or something like that so it's definitely nothing to get too nervous about and um it was actually a really interesting experience we had a good chat uh, myself and craig the head of performance after this test to talk about the good stuff and some of the um stuff that needs a bit more work and um, got some good training recommendations in terms of polarizing my training maybe a little more um so doing some of my endurance rides at a slightly lower wattage but then increasing the amount of time that i spend above threshold in training as well as the fasted stuff that i mentioned before so yeah uh if anyone's thinking of doing some testing i would definitely encourage them to do it um it's not it's not the cheapest thing in the world but um sometimes you can get in to do it with a, a university you know as part of a university study and um yeah it gives you some a accurate training zones but also an insight into some of your strengths and weaknesses and uh a good idea of where you are right now and and so you can measure against that sort of throughout the season if you want to do another test and measure that performance improvement so i hope that was uh, an interesting video for you a bit of an insight into me um me and my capabilities as well as hopefully what what a test like this kind of involves and um yeah thanks again um i'll catch you on another video soon and um i'll be back at it more regularly uh, from now on i've had a really busy uh time with the coaching business and traveling and racing and and uh, all the other stuff that goes with that so uh yeah thanks again for watching and i'll catch you on another video soon